anybody out there that's listening right now. There is a freedom in Christ when you're yeah. in love, when you're in his perfect love, it casts out all fear. And it was such confirmation to me because I'm thinking one of the reasons why your marriage doesn't function right, one of the reasons why you don't handle work and stress the way you should, one of the reasons why you worry and you're concerned, one of the reasons why, because we're carrying unknown damage just because we function and we think we're going throughout the day and we ate and we've taken these things like I can't sleep or I'm just irritated or he's just grumpy and we're taking these things and we're accepting bondage like this is normal. That's what I'm trying to say. And there's a freedom that lies out there for us in love, in Christ, to where we don't have to be like that anymore. God can completely set you free where you don't need to take any kind of anxiety medicine. You don't have to go to psychiatrists anymore. You don't have to do any of that. You could be totally free in Christ. And mm -hmm. when I saw it, when he said that, it was almost like an eye opening to, for him. And he's in ministry when he realized there is a freedom out there for people that's available to them. So. Yeah, there is a freedom. It's Jesus Christ, the freedom in the Lord. And that was though that we're, we're talking about a minister who yes. was bound by fear of man, an evangelist. And so the fear will come on anyone and the spirit of fear will come on anyone who yeah. will receive. So I think the importance of recognizing, I hope I'm not glitching, but I'm trying to get the Skyrim up around. But I, I hope I, I actually would see if you're glitching, you're not glitching. Good. So that anyone, any age that that fear can come on, but I guess it's about recognizing that the Bible calls it a spirit of fear. Cause you can just be afraid of something. It's not a spirit of fear, but if it's ongoing, you live with it, you don't feel free most of the time, then you could be dealing with a spirit of fear that needs to be, you need to get delivered from, but wow, like how it changes your nature. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, when you are not bound by that fear. And that's what the Lord wants. Um, wants us to be free. Cause on the cross, he defeated all principalities and the spirit of fear is one of those. So it's been defeated on the cross. It's just up to us to recognize, cast it out if we need to, or resist the devil. And he'll flee. The Bible says, look for what could open those doors. But he was talking about fear of man. Like a lot of people, maybe there's all kinds of ways, I guess that would yeah. look. You're, you're afraid to approach people. You're afraid to speak in front of people. You are afraid what people might think of you. You think too much about what people are thinking of you and it goes Absolutely. on. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I feel like, I feel like maybe we should start with that. Maybe right now I can't read these. I could read this if I put my glasses on, but I feel oh. kind of like this urgency that, you know, here, here's another one of my thoughts here is that these words that we're saying, people have heard them before. Oh, you just have to trust God. But we, I feel like we need to put legs on that. Like when he's saying in, in perfect love cast out fear. In other words, in Christ okay. means that you have humbled yourself and you have repented of the things that he's shown you and you've apologized and you have done these steps when you're in him. In other words, you're fully trusting him. And when you fully get to the place where you surrender all and you begin to walk in his love, the Holy Spirit will begin to fill you in such a way. One of the things he said this morning was that he went back and apologized. He was arguing yeah. with this guy. Or, and see, when you're in him, the Holy Spirit will lead you to go apologize. And he didn't sure. even want to apologize before. So, uh, go ahead. What are you going to say? Is that yeah. what he said? Yeah, remember he said he, he, you know, if he hadn't had this experience of understanding, being set free from fear, he wouldn't have went back and apologized to this guy. So let's start uh, with. Do you think he? I I thought maybe he apologized and then he got set free, but I don't know. No, I think after he was set free, he felt like he needed to call him. Remember, he was like, "I am so sorry," and 
and, uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, I believe that's how I understood it. Okay. So, so he also said something about trauma and I've mm -hmm. been talking about that. Um, I think Derek Prince, used to talk about that, how trauma, there's something that happened in your life, something occurred in your life uh, and well, it was, and it opened up the door. So let me just back up one more time, try to get my thoughts together. Let's start with anybody that doesn't believe that there's a supernatural thing going on. You have to believe that you believe in Ephesians. If you believe in the Bible, it says there are principalities and rulers in the unseen. In other words, the enemy has all these demonic strongholds. No one ultimately knows exactly how it works and what they look like. But Paul did say that we are, on a, we are have to be aware of the devil's schemes, their tricks, their strip. And these things, one of the lies with that is to get some Christians to believe that this doesn't even exist. Or no, that's not, no, this is very serious. My yeah. wife was, used to say yeah. to the kids, if you don't feel like yourself, you want to explain that? How if you don't feel like yourself, a lot of people say, why am I feeling this way? Sure. So... Growing up with my kids, um, our kids, uh, which, by the way, Lindsay, Elizabeth, Austin, and Dylan are our four kids and adults now. Um, but anyway, so growing up, I would tell them or teach them, like, if you don't feel like yourself sometimes, like you you could be struggling with something spiritual that we need to pray off to. And, you know, people can go weeks, months, years, yes. and they never realized at some point something came in their lives. They, you know, they got intimidated or, or something caused fear or that made their, their nature start to like feel different. Like I don't feel yeah. myself. I don't feel as free as I normally am. And yep. I'm dealing with something that's negative. Yeah. So I would tell them like, you know, if I notice like maybe they're not feeling as happy or as free, I'd say, yeah, if you don't feel like yourself, you know, maybe we need to pray off something. And it's not hard to do, but it needs to be done so that it would be very, very effective to pray. Yeah. Um, I remember one time driving. Um, I think we were driving to like a basketball game with Austin when he was a teenager or something. And I, and I said that to him. Like, And the boys on the basketball team were really kind of crude and unkind. And he's a very kind person. And I just noticed it was bothering him. And I just turned around. I just said, you know, can you tell me anything you're dealing with? And I think one was fear of man or fear or something. Yeah. And I just turned around. The name of Jesus, I command intimidation to come off of you in Jesus. Yeah. Mighty name. And two other things. And literally in an instant, in an instant, those things were gone. He's like, I feel good, mom. I feel free now. So it's like. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, that's that's good. I, I'm gonna do an illustration. I feel like there. See, a lot of people. Just so you know, this is important because see, he said when he believes. There's. I was talking earlier. There's a faith. There's a. You have to like really believe because one of the tricks is to get you to think that this isn't real or minimize it. No, I have been set free from so much stuff. This is real. This actually happens. The thing is, you can't physically see it. Mm -hmm. What you see is the fruit of what these things, these spirits do to you. Like yeah. people are like, they are fine one minute and the next time they're in a mood for hours and then they give them medicine. No, these are spirits. And I want to show you, it's, it's sort of like this. My son was feeling this way and this thing is actually on him. Nobody really ultimately knows what it looks like, but their Bible talks about a spirit, a spirit. It talks about strongholds. It talks about these things have a hold of you. And when she prayed, picture this thing on my hand, just it leaves. That's how it was with me. I had a spirit of jealousy. It was a prayer for years. And it just like, it just left. It's like, oh my goodness, I've been living like this for all these years and it's gone. And it's like, and there's so many people out there. I know for sure with as many people are on, I don't know, it looks like quite, quite a few. I know that somebody out here, you've been dealing with this, and we we have to believe by faith that we can pray, and these spirits, I'm trying to explain it so people understand, these spirits, the only way they'll leave and let you go, and there's only one way, and that's by the power in the name of Jesus, and that's Amen. one of the things he did on the cross. 